know, oh, I can't stand myself. It's like, well, there's a I and a self, and one of them has to be a fake because there can only be the one thing. And so the self that we're, I don't even know what the mechanism is. But, it, you know, is it the patterning that is calling itself the it's, self that's it's, turning yeah. around and looking? Or is it the... The mechanism is the same mechanism we've been talking about all night. The fact that consciousness can spin out these fantasies. And consciousness can, reality can spin out a fantasy of a self. Reality can spin out a fantasy that the self has certain qualities. And then reality can spin out fantasies of identifying itself with the self and criticizing itself for having but those qualities. What is it that's turning around and looking at the self, saying that it has to fix the self? It's inherent Just in the another. nature of consciousness that it can do this. Consciousness is is infinite. Consciousness is mobile. Consciousness is not stuck or locked in. Consciousness has nameless and unfathomable powers and abilities. I mean, it's doing all this. You know, it's it's inconceivable. So. Consciousness can do all this. But even in doing it, it, it doesn't alienate itself. It always remains what it is. It always remains this. And that's the trick, is to see that fact. When you see that conclusively, and with certainty and with clarity, then you can't possibly, you know with certainty, you can't possibly be alienated from your being no matter what happens and you stop caring about what happens. And that's what's commonly called liberation. You're liberated from giving a shit. Because you know no apparent turn of affairs can actually alienate reality from itself. And you are that reality. So you can't be improved, you can't be, you know, you can't be detracted from, you can't succeed, you can't fail. You're just God. <laughs> so it's, it's an open-ended mystery. We can interpret it any which way, and there's no erroneous interpretations. You know, neither are there accurate interpretations. You know, but but all so all of these all of these analogies and all of this talking and all this stuff is all lies. You know, I have not I have never said a true word in satsang. It can't be done because there's no such thing as a true word because you can't capture this in symbols. And yet, this and the symbols are inextricably one. And the lies are one with this. So the whole thing is completely unfathomable. You can't say there's a point to it, but you can't say it's pointless. So where does that leave us? <laughs> it it opens up and you and you see oh, you see with more and more certainty and with more and more confidence the fact of its ungraspability and the fact that you don't need to grasp it because you already are it inherently and when you see that with certainty when you see that with clarity grasping or not grasping becomes a moot it, it becomes moot it's just you know it, 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 it's, it's there's no point in it and then at that point that this, you know, it's like letting the air out of a balloon, you know, the, the pressure, the, the motivation to, to, to pursue this seeking, this grasping, this searching, just, right. you let go. But what does that is seeing with clarity, seeing with certainty, yeah. and that happens when it happens. Yeah. You know? But, but, you know, you, you, who, no one knows whether or not the actual process of seeking, the actual process of grasping is a part of the, find, the ultimate finding or not. It certainly looks like it might be, but since it's all a mystery, no one can know. <laughs> but the fact is, when you find, you find. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, right. And it doesn't have anything to do with grasping, it doesn't have anything to do with searching, it actually has ultimately to do with stopping grasping and stopping searching. Yeah. We think the way we're used to seeing things is the way they actually are. You know? And to be able to see things differently than the way we're used to seeing them, and to see that that's, that can also be a valid way of experiencing things, by that very fact, expands or, 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 or contradicts that habitual viewpoint and opens the door to, maybe there's more going on here. Maybe it's not the way I thought it was. And if it's not the way I thought it was, then what is it? And that questioning, that what is it attitude, is entering into the mystery. And 
When you don't know what it is, is the only time you'll be able to see what it is. As soon as you think you know what it is, you're only going to see your ideas and you won't be seeing what it is. You know, and that's, that's our problem because we're so good at spinning out these ideas and these interpretations, you know, and we do it subliminally, we don't even know we're doing it. We just assume that it's objective, you know. But to be able to actually get into a, a, into a point of view where, wow, you know, what is it? Into a point of view of mystery, into a point of view of awe, into a point of view of reverence. At that point, you don't know what it is, but here it is. And that's really interesting. That's a really interesting place to be. Because then you can look at what it is with, from a point of view of not knowing, and at that point you can actually see what it is, because it'll be telling you what it is, instead of our usual stance where we're telling it what it is. You know, this is a room and you're people and we're talking and, you know, that's imposing on this unknown mystery saying what it is. I'm telling it that this is a room. I'm telling it that we're people. I'm telling it that we're talking. But it, what is this if we don't know it's a room? What is it if we don't know we're people? What is it if we don't know this is talking? All of a sudden, what is it? What is it? <clears throat> it doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. But all of a sudden, we don't know what it is. <laughs> you know, the pot of gold is found when you stop trying to describe it. You know, as long as you're trying to describe it, all you're going to find is your description. So as long as you, you know, are modeling it, all you're going to find is your model. So that's an exercise in creativity and can be great fun and very diverting and keep you off the streets, spinning these models. But once you spin these models, all you find is your model. So the only real solution to this particular dilemma is to see that none of these models actually apply. And then all of a sudden, bang, there's no jail cells. You know, it, it, and, and at that point also, jail cells aren't jail cells anymore. They're just the machinations of this incredible, incredibly creative intelligence that inheres in the nature of reality. And so it can spin off models all at once and there's nothing being trapped in them. So at that point, you're suddenly free to be, to pretend you're anything and you don't give a shit because you know you're not. You know you're beyond any model, beyond any description. You know it absolutely with total clarity and, and unassailable certainty. You know, and, and that, again, that's, that's what is called liberation because you can't be trapped. It's not that you're not trapped or you've worked your way to freedom. You've seen that the whole concept of bondage or limitation is a fantasy. It doesn't actually, it can't exist. There is nothing that's, that's made. The only way consciousness could be trapped is by itself. And consciousness trapping consciousness is like water being trapped by the ocean. You know, it's, an, it's a non-event. <laughs> you know? And the solution to the small self is to see that it's imaginary. You don't need to get rid of it. It's not even a problem. Right. It just doesn't actually exist as a separate thing. Yeah, right. It's a fantasy of God. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's good. And God is what this actually is in real time. God is the only thing that's here. God is the substance of all this, and God is the experiencer of all this. And that's the end of the story. So anything apparently else that's happening, i.e. our small selves and our struggles for freedom and survival and security and all this, is just a way of saying God is. Right, yeah.